Alright, in this video I'm going to talk about the ratio test for series. And the ratio test for series is, uh, to me, one of the more useful um, tests for determining whether or not a series um, converges or diverges. And you use this a lot in conjunction with power series and some other things as well. So it's uh, definitely one of the tests that's uh, probably pretty good to be, be practiced up on. So um, the ratio test says this. We said basically everywhere there's an n in your series, you replace it with an n plus 1. And then you divide that by the original terms in the series. And it says if the number you get out when you take the limit as n goes to infinity is smaller than 1, you can claim that the original series is convergent. It's actually called absolutely convergent, but the main thing we're worried about is that this original series is convergent. If this ratio ends up being something bigger than 1 or infinity, then we can claim that this series is divergent. So the last case is, well, if this limit equals 1, well, if the limit equals 1, you can't make any conclusion at all. Um, you would have to figure out a different way to do it, unfortunately. So, not foolproof, but uh, it does work most of the time. So let's apply that to this series here. Okay, so it says we need to take the limit as n goes to infinity, and it says everywhere there's an n, I'm going to replace it with n plus 1. So I'll have n plus 1 squared all over 2 to the n plus 1. And this is the only time you're going to see me do this. So we're dividing by the original. But dividing by the original is equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of the original. So usually I just even skip this first step and I'll write, you know, I'll have my n plus 1 squared over 2 to the n plus 1 and then I'll multiply that by 2 to the n over n squared. Whoops. Okay, so now this is the thing that I have to simplify down. So I plug in n plus 1's and then I just take the original series, the terms in the series and flip it. Alright, so we're going to have the limit as n goes to infinity. So notice here I've got 2 to the n on top, 2 to the n plus 1 on the bottom. If we simplify, we'll simply have a 2 in the denominator. I've got n plus 1 and only n on top. If I multiply out the numerator, I'm going to have n squared plus 2n plus 1. And that's all being divided by n squared. Remember with limits, if you have a constant floating around like we do in this case, we have this divided by 2. You can factor that number out front, so I have 1 half, the limit as n goes to infinity of n squared plus 2n plus 1, and that's all being divided by n squared. And remember this trick for rational functions, is you can think about it as being a, a rational function. If the power on top is the same as the highest power on the bottom, you just take the ratio of their coefficients and that's what the limit as n, as n goes to infinity is going to equal. So I notice, well hey, there's an n squared and an n squared. I look at the ratio of their coefficients. That's what the limit part is going to equal. So this limit is simply going to turn out to equal 1 half times 1, which is a half, and this number is certainly smaller than 1, so what we can claim is, is that our original series, n equals 1 to infinity of n squared over 2 to the n is convergent. Okay, so that's the conclusion by the ratio test. So let's do, uh, let's do another one of these. All right, so here I've got the series n times negative 3 raised to the n, and then 4 to the n minus 1. So again, I'm going to do the limit as n goes to infinity. Everywhere there's an n, I'm going to replace it with n plus 1. So I'll have negative 3 raised to the n plus 1 power. And then I'm going to have 4 raised to the n plus 1 minus 1 power. And then I need to multiply that by the 
flip of the original. So I'll have 4 raised to the n minus 1 on top, and then I'll have an n and negative 3 to the n on the bottom. So I'm plugging in n plus 1's, and then I'm just flipping the original one and sticking it out to the side. So notice if we simplify this down here a little bit, I'm not going to do anything with my n plus 1 or my n term just yet, but I am going to put them together. Notice on the bottom I'll have n plus 1 minus 1, that's 4 to the n. I've only got n minus 1's in the denominator though, so it looks like to me I'm going to be left with a 4 in the denominator, because I have one extra one. I have n plus 1 negative 3's on the bottom, excuse me, on the top. I only have n of those on the bottom. Well again, if you cancel, it looks like you'll be left with negative 3. So that takes care of the negative 3 and the negative 3. We've taken care of the 4 and the 4. And then I'm just left with the n plus 1 over n, which is what I have out front. And I'm going to do the same thing as before. I'm going to factor this number out. But when you pull something outside of an absolute value, it comes out as the positive value of that. So instead of coming out as negative 3 fourths, we'll get positive 3 fourths. I have the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n. Same trick as before. You can think about this as being a rational function. If we take the ratio of those coefficients, this limit is simply going to work out to be equal to 1. So I'm going to be left with 3 fourths times 1, which is 3 fourths, again, which is less than 1. So what we can, can conclude is that this limit the series from n equals 1 to infinity of n times negative 3 to the n over 4 raised to the n minus 1 is convergent. Okay. So maybe let me do uh, one other one here real quick. Actually, I think I'm going to run out of time. I think I'm going to go over the 10 minute time limit. So what I'll do is um, I'll post a follow-up to this one where we do some more um, more ratio tests for series converging or diverging. So should be pretty close to this one, so just look around and I'm sure you can find it.